Chapter 4, Falling Down, Getting Up. Why do we fall down, Master Bruce? Oh, look at her girl in her workout gear. So cute. I will say the endgame um, gym clothes, athletic uniform, suits her pretty nicely. And in the next few weeks, I want to take you around Brazil, show you some of the best places to eat or spend time. They're actually going to let me out of the compound? You're not a prisoner, Morgan. I keep telling you that. I mean, they'll want you to have an escort when you go out. But just so you're aware, Magnus never leaves without an escort either. Mm, I feel like he might sneak out time and again. I think he, he'd be able to slip it once in a while. I can't help but think going everywhere with a chaperone sounds like so much fun. If I'm your escort, it will be the most fun you've ever had, thank you very much. Uh-huh. Hey, these are the punching bags she was telling me about. When we reached the training room Vaughn was escorting me to for my first training session with Ari, there was a small crowd gathered there. Oh boy. Checking out the new queen and her moves. A few were near the door, but most were along the walls watching the sparring match going on in the center of the room. I can't believe Caleb talked Ari into this before his session with you. How early did those two get here? What makes you think Caleb instigated this? I trailed off when she looked at me like, You think it was Ari's idea? Really? Really? Okay, point taken. But the two of them sparring like that... Oh, dang. <laughs> alright, alright. Uh, very cool tattoo, Caleb. I'll give you that much. Also, is that your leg coming up, Ari? Because damn, flexible boy. Caleb was no surprise, but I didn't expect Ari to be that... fit. <clears throat> My eyes followed his movements as Ari blocked a kick. It was easy to see why they'd gathered an audience. Watching two sweaty, attractive guys practice isn't all that bad, I guess. So, like I mentioned yesterday, this is where a lot of us who have named ranks do our training. Uh-huh. I didn't know much about this sort of thing, but there appear to be several styles of fighting going on at once. Prior to joining the safety department, Wayne had studied martial arts as well. I'd watched him spar with his classmates before. They did a lot of bouncing at each other without ever throwing a punch or kick. Caleb and Ari were not like that. It was intense for a sparring match. And if they were pulling the punches, it didn't seem to be by much. Caleb seemed to have the upper hand, though. I caught snatches of conversation around me and wasn't surprised that most of those watching were rooting for Ari. Poor Caleb. Vaughn leaned in closer. Most here are upper-level infantry and ranked junior agents. Lower-level infantry are all housed in a different location. Same for non-agents, like researchers and such. Mm-hmm. Oh! Ari almost got him there! He'd managed to hook his foot around Caleb's leg and nearly swept him onto his back, but Caleb twisted away and responded with a solid kick that Ari only just blocked. The training rooms up here are also better reinforced, so it makes sense that those with stronger abilities come up here. Hmm. So which one do you think is better looking? Huh? <laughs> I was wondering when she was gonna... I'm like, I don't trust this uh, conversation. I'm like, you're, you're, you're seeing this girl being like, Oh, look at these attractive sweaty guys. And you're like, mm-hmm. Vaughn's laugh was loud enough to draw several looks as I whipped my head around and glared at her. Well, you're watching them pretty closely. I didn't think you were even listening to me. I was listening. Sort of. I was just thinking it's a bit intimidating. They don't seem to be going easy on each other. They never do. Oh! I winced as Caleb somehow got his arms around Ari's waist and in one smooth twist and throw... They were both on the ground. Ari hit first, though. And while Caleb jumped back to his feet, Ari lay there for a moment, winded. Ouch. Well, that's usually how it goes. Physical combat is Caleb's specialty, after all. 
As Ari rolled over and got back to his feet, the people watching from the side swarmed the mat. Some congratulated Caleb while others helped Ari to his feet. You never answered my question. Which one's better looking? The one that doesn't usually have a look on his face like he wants to murder me in my sleep. In any case, they both seem to have a lot of fans. Well, the guard is made up of the elite of elites, so people look up to us. I guess there is a little celebrity that comes with the job. I'm sure you'll get a little fan club going. Bertie looked ready to polish your shoes if you asked. No, thank you. I swear, you are no fun. At all. I wasn't sure how I felt about the thought of a... a fan club. That was just weird. Oh, yeah, he's, uh, he's fit. I see, I see what you're seeing. When I looked back to Ari, I realized Vaughn and I had been spotted. Our eyes met, and he squeezed his way out of the group of people, assuring him his sparring was amazing. That alerted everyone else we were there, and a little murmur ran through the room. Caleb looked our way, then proceeded to ignore us. Not that I was at all surprised by that. Ari joined us by the door, rotating one shoulder slightly. The one that had taken the brunt of his fall when Caleb threw him. Oh, we have an affectionate thing. I mean, we gotta go affectionate. Is your shoulder all right? Sparring always results in bumps and bruises. I will recover quickly. As you are aware, we all have bio-enhancements that accelerate our healing. That's not what I was asking. He gave me a confused look, lifting one eyebrow. I wasn't asking if your shoulder was going to be okay. I asked if it was okay... right now. It isn't seriously... Are you in pain, Ari? That's what she wants to know. Thank you, Vaughn. Oh. My shoulder is a little sore, but it's not a cause of concern. It looked like a pretty bad throw. Caleb is not gentle when sparring. Remind me to never spar with Caleb. That would be wise for the time being. Well, when it's his turn, I can't wait to spar with him. That'll be fun. Or for forever. There will come a time when you'll be able to best him in a sparring match if you're both using your abilities. <laughs> that... I hadn't considered that this is a possibility. I have to admit, that sounds very tempting. <laughs> Vanessa snickered. Glad you found some motivation. I'm also glad that motivation is kicking Caleb's ass. It has a nice sort of poetic justice to it. Unknown woman, hello? So that really is her. The question wasn't directed at us, but they said it loud enough we all heard it. I instinctively turned my head towards a nearby group looking our way. Seriously? She looks a little... There was a small titter of laughter in response to something said low enough I couldn't hear. So there were these kinds of people here as well. Yay, bullies, I love them. Oh, uh, uh, um, hi. I'll admit, I, I like Caleb's hair more like this than his usual look. It's, uh, it works for him. If you're curious, why don't you ask instead of standing off to the side whispering to yourselves like little kids? Yeah, get him, Caleb. The group went dead quiet at the call-out. Caleb hardly spared a glance as he started out of the training room with a towel tossed over his shoulder. And I don't know what you brats think she looks like, but you should know looks have nothing to do with ability. From what I've seen, most of you won't want to go against her when she gets even a bit of training. A compliment? Are you feeling- are you in a good mood because you beat Ari? Like, what- did you have your Wheaties this morning? What happened? Did he just... defend me? Kale is right. If you're curious, you kids can just ask, you know. One girl at the front of the group looked me up and down again, then folded her arms over her chest. Oh, well you look friendly. So, you're the new queen, right? I wasn't confident claiming that title, but somehow with her staring at me like that, I lifted my chin slightly. Yes, I am. 
Heidi is an upper level infantry. She graduated and joined the newest group of junior agents recently. One of the top in her class, despite not having a named rank. I'll get myself promoted to named rank soon enough. Is that possible? To go from infantry to a named rank? You don't even know that much? Unlike the rest of you, Morgan hasn't been privy to the inner workings of Endgame long enough to know the details of how our ranks work. Oh, right. Of course. It's easy to forget she's new despite her age. Hey, don't say it like I'm old or something. Upper level infantry can raise their skills high enough to get promoted to a named rank. It just takes some hard work. She casts a sidelong look Ari's way. And sometimes special training. Training isn't always enough for someone to raise their scores high enough to become eligible for a Psy expansion. I think we've read this already. Uh, making their Psy energy stronger. Well, maybe not. To facilitate promotion? Hmm. You know what? I'm gonna read it anyway, just in case. A type of nano expansion geared toward expanding the Psy network in the brain by using nanites to mimic the neuron clusters within an Esper's foric system. This has the effect of enhancing a person's Psy output and making their Psy energy much stronger. Much of the public isn't aware that Psy expansions exist and they are illegal in most places, though Endgame makes use of them to facilitate promotion in some of its high-level infantry. Psy expansions can be extremely dangerous for non-espers or anyone not able to handle the increased resonance, leading to extreme psi fatigue, power surging, even burnout and permanent brain damage. In fact, psi expansions have proven consistently safe for only a small number of infantry, with a unique sort of flexibility in their foric systems. These infantry can use psi expansions to facilitate something called promotion that involves ra raising their EA score and obtaining a named rank and specialized skills. Promotion is extremely rare, and Psy expansions are dangerous even for the small group of infantry most of the time. That's really cute how that's implemented. I love that so much. So much good thought put into this. You never know until you try. Perhaps. If you'll excuse me. Morgan and I have a training session scheduled. Morgan? Heidi looked a little upset at being dismissed. He motioned me towards the other side of the room. Coming. I shot an awkward smile at the junior agents clustered nearby. There was definitely a hidden meaning to that exchange, wasn't there? Yep. Heidi stared after Ari, but looked back at me before starting out of the room. When I get promoted to queen rank, I look forward to having a few matches with you. I heard about that sigh burst of yours. I can't wait to see it myself. Ah, uh, I see. A rival has appeared. The rest of the jun junior agents filed out of the room after Heidi. I thought Bertie intended to do something about those rumors. Why do I feel I might be stepping on some toes by being here? Don't worry about it, Morgan. There's no guarantee she's even capable of achieving queen rank. Do you know how hard that is? No, I don't. I don't know anything about any of this. Fair enough. For the record, it's incredibly difficult. Very few infantry have the flexibility to get promoted at all. It's not like they just sign up for a Psy expansion and hope for the best. They have to focus on raising very specific aspects of their Psy ability to certain levels. For someone aiming at Rook or Knight or Bishop, it's one thing. For something like Queen Rank, where they have to master all those areas? I think she's years away from it, if it's even possible at all. A Psy expansion? So basically a nano expansion that targets an increase to Psy ability? I didn't know that was possible. As you can imagine, we don't broadcast that it is, now that it stops illegal attempts anyway. It's quite dangerous. It's not like expansions that reinforce body systems like a bio expansion or your neural enhancements. I guess if it was easy, they'd be creating espers in a lab somewhere. Most likely. But if you try to give one of these expansions to a normal person, you'd probably kill them. So don't feel bad about being here. Queen promotion isn't easy to achieve. It's not something you just do because you want to. Then why does she want to if it's so dangerous? 
Why does anyone want a promotion in their job? The pay is better, privileges are better, you get more respect, more attention. Doesn't seem worth it to me. This is a big organization, Morgan, and most of the espers in it are infantry. They all want to stand out. I mean, look at Caleb and Ari. They were just blowing off steam and gathered an audience to watch. People like the attention, the clout. Promotion is one way they can get those things. It made sense there was that kind of thing going on as well, but somehow I hadn't expected it. Endgame had always seemed, well, above it all. He's like, are you coming? Is everything alright? It's almost time for us to begin. Sorry, coming. Thanks for walking me down here, Vaughn. I appreciate it. Don't worry about it. I'll catch up with you later. Have a good session. I couldn't help the flicker of apprehension as I joined Ari on the other side of the room. I still wish they had chosen Vanessa to work with me. Her jokes and teasing always set me at ease. With Ari, I can never tell what he was thinking. We won't be doing anything strenuous today. There's no need to look so anxious. Is it that obvious? You tend to express your feelings rather openly on your face. Doesn't everyone? That's kind of the point of them, isn't it? It didn't take anything more than the raised eyebrow for me to get the point. He didn't tend to relay much via facial expression anyway. Well, I'm glad to know I'm an open book. It does make interacting with you a little easier. Not sure how I feel about that. He positioned himself across from me, but within arm's reach. For today, I want to demonstrate the proper way to warm up for a physical workout. I'd also like to observe your strength level and stamina, so I can create a proper training regimen for you. And maybe begin the very basics of self-defense. At the end, I'll show some meditative techniques I'd like you to work on in your spare time. I do already know some self-defense techniques, just for the record. Is that so? One of my brothers is a public service officer. Since I was the only girl, they were all a bit protective. He and my dad taught me a few things. We used to go jogging together before he moved out, too, but that was a few years ago. That's good to know. I'm glad there is a foundation to start from, but we'll follow my plan for today so I can see exactly where you are. I understand. Now, for warm-up, we start with stretches and follow with some light cardiovascular exercise. He placed his right hand on the back of his opposite arm, lifting them both over his head and twisting his body slightly. From his slight nod, I gathered he wanted me to mirror his movements. Warming up is necessary to avoid injury. We'll spend the first 15 minutes doing stretches every day. Just follow my movements. The stretching part was fine. I wasn't terribly flexible or anything, but he wasn't expecting me to be a contortionist. It was when we moved into the light cardiovascular exercise that I realized I'd gotten a little out of shape in the last year or so. You and me both, Morgan. The fact Ari was observing made me extra self-conscious. Fortunately, his warm-up only lasted for about half an hour. He seemed mostly pleased with my performance, but noted my stamina is a little low. I hope you realize I'm a student. I did spend a lot of time studying, not fighting off Mafia people. It wasn't a criticism. Merely an observation. We'll focus efforts on improving that as we go forward. This is a highly physical job much of the time. In addition, increasing your physical stamina will also increase your ability to use Psy without the danger of Psy fatigue. Stamina training. Fun. No, no, but, like, think about it. We, y you know... Uh, eh? Eh? You know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> Stamina training. It could be fun. If you think about it a certain way, especially with this guy who's very good looking, I'm just saying. All right, I'm done. I promise. <laughs> I'll behave for the rest of the, uh, the rest of this video. <laughs> I'll try anyway. Anyway. For now, we'll be moving to something else. Meditation will be a part of our cooldown at the end of the session. 
but for now, I want to teach you one of the more important principles of handling yourself in a physical confrontation. And I want to practice this every session going forward. You can consider it the foundation for all of our self-defense training. And that is? Falling. Falling? Blocking, balance stance, or anything else would have made more sense. More precisely, I want to show you how to fall safely. He took a few steps back from me. In any confrontation, there is the risk of falling, being thrown, being knocked down. It's unavoidable. As such, it's important that you be able to fall without injuring yourself. If you fall with the right amount of grace, you can get up and continue to fight. Sounds almost like a metaphor for life. Perhaps it is. My mentor once said learning to fall means learning to view the situation objectively, thus gaining insight from each failure. This allows you to accept what happened, get up, and continue on. If you fall poorly, you could end up hurt. Worse, you'll lie where you are and lose your fight. Still sounds like a metaphor. Stay where you are and wallow in pain and loss, or fall gracefully so you can get up and keep going. There are many martial arts principles that can apply to life as a whole. But this one seems particularly relevant. Almost like you're telling me it's time to move forward. Falling safely is a principal part of self-defense. But it would be inaccurate to say I didn't feel this lesson would have an additional benefit for you, given your circumstances. Though I wouldn't characterize your behavior as wallowing either. A small smile crossed my face. His way of handling it was a little clumsy, but I could appreciate the sentiment. Thank you. I don't believe I've done anything worthy of thanks. We haven't even started. <laughs> I just laughed at his confusion. He really was dense, as Vaughn had said. I know, but thank you anyway. You're welcome. Shall we continue? Yes. The first thing to remember is that when something falls, the more area of impact it has, the less damage it receives. For us, that means our back is the largest and safest area to direct a fall. Sounds simple enough. I'll do a quick demonstration of the first technique we will learn. He continued to speak as he showed a very precise fall that looked more like rolling onto his back from crouching than slapping the mat with both hands. He jumped back to his feet. It'll be tempting to catch yourself on your hands but the sudden impact to your arm can cause severe injury to the wrist and shoulder. We have enhanced regeneration, but the middle of a confrontation is not where you want to be nursing an injured wrist or shoulder. Oh, we got a blush on our girl, alert. He sidled beside me, almost cradling my body against his as he gently pushed the back of my head to make me look down. Tuck your chin to your chest so you don't slam your head on the ground as you fall. These techniques are meant to protect you, so there's no point if they do more harm than good due to improper methodology. I was trying to focus on his words, but the sensation of his fingers against the back of my neck sent a little shiver through me. Calm down, Morgan. Good grief. He's teaching you a weird falling method, not trying to seduce you. Well, I mean, there might be time for that. Stamina training, don't forget. The first time you do it, I'll be here to ensure you fall gently as you get a feel for the motion. And don't simply drop from this height. You want to bend your legs and drop from a lower height. I... think I understand. Thankfully, he finally moved away, keeping one hand on my shoulder. Now, do it as I showed you. I'm right here to catch you if it looks like you need it. I'm supposed to be falling. Catching me seems counterproductive. Perhaps. But it's easier to fall when you know there's someone to help you get back up, isn't it? Damn, look at this boy with all his metaphors. I suppose it is. My first fall attempt was a little awkward, and so was the second. I felt silly doing nothing but falling over and over especially under Ari's watchful instruction. 
but he was only ever helpful, showing me things like how to stand back up without letting my hands touch the mat, or the proper position for my legs at the end of my fall. After he decided I'd gotten the hang of falling onto my back, he showed me another technique that involved falling more on my side. That one was much trickier, and I still felt awkward with it even when he decided to move on. By the time we stopped, I was sweating, despite that we weren't doing anything that hard. We took a quick break after a little over half an hour. Ari had thought ahead and had two flasks of water waiting for us on the side. He handed me one without a word, taking the other one for himself. I drank from it gratefully, watching him out of the corner of my eye. There was a thin sheen of sweat on his forehead, but I suspected it was because it was just warm in the room. That couldn't have functioned as any sort of real workout for him. His eyes really are a strange color, aren't they? That had to be due to... fade. It was the same thing that caused my hair to go white. Though it hadn't affected my eyes, I suppose my case hadn't been as severe. I had heard it could affect eye color as well. Ari looked my way. I flushed and averted my gaze. I hadn't meant to stare. It wasn't like I hadn't gotten a good look at him a dozen times already. Is everything alright? It's fine! Um, we're going to work on meditation next? Or is there more falling and getting back up to be done? I thought it would be best to end with meditation, yes. Does everyone here use meditation to help with their abilities? Not everyone needs it, but it's encouraged. I use it to help me maintain focus. Utilizing long-range teleportation abilities can be dangerous. It requires very precise clairvoyant reach. Clairvoyance is specifically the knowledge of present events as they are happening, despite the distance between the event and the Esper. Clairvoyance is a basic psionic skill possessed by everyone with Psy energy, even non-Espers to some degree. It is the quintessential Psy ability. For most humans with EA scores at or below the planetary standard, their mild clairvoyance allows them the ability to utilize the nanosystem naturally. For Espers, this ability is far stronger. For instance, it is what allows knights to locate and teleport to a targeted area safely, and Esper's range of clairvoyant awareness is referred to as their sphere. Okay. I believe it'll help you as well. Queens require great flexibility in thinking, and a general understanding of many other kinds of psi. Mimicking different skills can be difficult to master, and the mind strain can be immense. This music, hello. So, besides being put in dangerous situations, I also have to deal with the fact that just using my Psy ability can be dangerous? Our jobs are dangerous, but mitigating that danger is the purpose of this training. Is something bothering you? Not at all. I'm fine with training to prepare myself for the immense strain of doing this job. You were under immense strain during your studies, were you not? That's not the same thing. Is this not just another form of study? I was studying archaeology. This is studying to do some dangerous job I never imagined I'd be doing. As I recall from your records, wasn't your goal to go off-world to conduct research? And? I assume field work is often done in dangerous locations where there are harsh conditions. Surely excavation sites aren't always safe either. Of course it's not without danger. This job, as well, is not without danger. In that, not much about your situation has changed. Hmm. I still don't think it's the same. You know what? I could be analytical about this. He's trying to... to help. In his way. <laughs> I guess I didn't really think of it that way. Maybe it feels different, because the dangers of uncovering historical sites aren't as... in your face. I'm not sure I understand what you mean. There's a difference between a situation where you might encounter something dangerous, and where you might encounter someone actively trying to harm you. Look. I took a rock climbing class two years ago. It was right at the edge of the waste, 
there's a city there called Hiraith that houses several small natural cliffs. A small city on the edge of the Twilight region, it is built directly into some cliffs and is known for its rock climbing and the naturalistic culture and lifestyle promoted in the city. It is non-aligned and largely self-sufficient. It's a popular vacation spot for people from more d populated domes. Okay. <laughs> I laughed slightly, shaking my head at the memory. I thought it would be helpful if I ever managed to get off-world. I mean, you never know what you'll encounter. Anyway, there were safety lines and everything, but it's not like there was no danger at all. And in a way, the fact it was a little dangerous made it more exciting. But it wasn't like the rocks were trying to kill me. Can you not learn to see this job as exciting? I don't know. On that trip, there was this moment I was scaling a nearly vertical rock face. And at one point, my foot slipped, but I managed to hang on and keep climbing. When I reached the top and saw how far I'd climbed, there was such a wonderful sense of accomplishment. I don't know that I can ever feel that way from beating up someone else. Our job does not involve only beating people up, Morgan. We protect people as well, and we help this planet continue to function peacefully. I believe you may find that you feel a similar sense of accomplishment from realizing you kept someone safe in a dangerous situation. It is an erroneous assumption that all we do is fight, or try to avoid being killed by other people. To be fair, my introduction to all this involved a significant amount of fighting and people shooting at me. I can see how that might have given you a distorted view of what it means to be here. But remember, you are not alone. None of us is. We work in teams. And your team includes people who will be quite determined to keep you safe. This job is dangerous, perhaps differently from what you were prepared for. But that is the purpose of this training. To prepare you. Just like your studies. Just like your rock climbing class. It's just hard to maintain sight of that when people keep talking about the danger aspect. For the time being, simply focus on the task before you. During the rest of the session, we'll be... He stopped abruptly and tilted his head away from me. His eyes went far away, fixing on a point somewhere across the room. I knew that look well. He was getting a message from someone else. It took a few minutes before he looked at me again. It seems we will have to cut this session short. I apologize, but my presence is required elsewhere. Is everything okay? It's nothing you should worry about. Just work. We must reserve working on meditation techniques for tomorrow. Alright. I understand. In the meantime, you should shower and relax. You worked hard today. We'll resume the lesson tomorrow at the same time. He picked up his things and left quickly. I watched him go, wondering what was so urgent that he had to ditch our lesson like that. After a moment, I left the training room again, heading for my flat for a shower. After cleaning up, I decided to go to the lounge for dinner. I was still iffy about the stares and whispers, but I couldn't stay holed up in my flat forever. Vaughn was right. This was home now. The session with Ari had taken an unexpected turn as well. I hadn't expected life lessons on falling and moving forward. But whether or not he intended it, the message was clear, and it helped put things in perspective. I would have to adapt. And even if I was a little self-conscious on my own, dinner at the lounge turned out fine. I saw Birdie and Casey again, and they chatted for a while. That was nice. The two of them were fun to be around. I spent the entire evening laughing at their antics. The only dark spot to the evening was after they left. And even then, it wasn't that bad. A group of junior agents had come in, one of them being that girl from earlier in the morning, the one who wanted a queen promotion. I almost confronted them when I heard them snickering and looking my way. It was so ridiculous for them to act that way. But I had to remind myself they were younger than me. Not by much, but by enough. It showed in their actions. And then I just felt sad that such young kids were out in the field doing a dangerous job. I didn't have the heart to say anything to them after that. 
Eventually, I found myself standing at the window with a cup of tea in hand, looking out over Bracel and listening to the quiet murmur of voices around me. Oh, hello, Mr. Casual. I didn't expect to see you out and about for a while. Not alone, anyhow. I stiffened at the sound of Caleb's voice, but didn't object when he joined me at the window. I can't stay in my room forever. Can't argue with that. Oh? There's something you can't argue with? That's a surprise. Looks like Vaughn's already started to rub off on you in the most annoying ways. <laughs> I just laughed at his irritation. He must not have been too bothered by me being annoying, though, because he didn't leave. How'd training go today? It was fine, but we didn't quite make it to the end. Ari was called away before we could finish, so it was cut a little short. Well, he's in high demand, so I guess that's not a shock. High demand? Do you know where they called him to? Who knows? They're always wanting him to teleport people to various places around. Half the time he's treated like a transport instead of an agent. It's shitty work, but he never complains, so they keep asking it of him. Just Ari? It's not like he's the only knight here. Only one with the range he's got. He took a sip from his cup, eyes focused somewhere in the distance. I feel bad that he has to deal with me on top of all that now. Don't. If he doesn't like it, he can say so. Ari would never say anything, even if he didn't like it. <laughs> Probably. Idiot never complains about anything, even when he should. I don't think that makes him an idiot. If you feel bad about it, work hard so it's worthwhile for him to put time into training you. I guess that's the most practical way to look at it. And next time he gets called away early, you can always ask someone else to take over. Ari's not the only member of your guard. Are you volunteering? You're volunteering then? Better than having you toss another building at me because you don't know what the hell you're doing out there. Ah, uh, that makes more sense. What's that mean? You almost sounded like you were being nice, so I was a little confused. Shut the hell up. <laughs> I just laughed at him again. Look at you two getting along. It's nice. Hey, you love to see it. You'll never let me live down that building thing, will you? Maybe when you get over the kidnapping thing. Fair enough. We stood there quietly for a long time, looking out over Bracil, before I went back to my room, feeling lighter than before. Everything really would be okay after all, I was certain. <laughs>